Today I will read Ox Cart Man, written by Donald Hall, pictures by Barbara Cooney, and give you some ideas for how you can work together with your family to work toward something you want to do together. I'm Chelsea Wanicki from University of Wisconsin Division of Extension, and welcome to UW Money As You Grow book read. In today's book, a farm family uses their time, energy, and talent to make or grow almost everything they need. They also make and grow extra things to take to the market and sell. After the book, we'll talk about some activities you can try at home. From this parent guide, from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You can also find out more about Money As You Grow Bookshelf at the end of the website link that I'll share at the end of this video. So let's get started. Oxcart Man by Donald Hall, pictures by Barbara Cooney. In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. He packed potatoes they dug from their garden. But first he counted out potatoes enough to eat all winter and potatoes for seed next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March when they boiled and boiled and boiled the sap away. He packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son and he walked at his ox's head for 10 days, over hills, through valleys, by streams, past farms and villages, until he came to Portsmouth in Portsmouth Market. He sold the bag of wool, he sold the shawl his wife made, he sold five pairs of mittens, he sold candles and shingles, he sold birch brooms, he sold potatoes, he sold apples, he sold honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, he sold maple sugar, he sold a bag of goose feathers. Then he sold the wooden box he carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel he carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. Then he sold his ox cart. Then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on the nose. Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for his son, he bought a barlow knife for carving birch browns with. And for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candies. Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle and a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pockets. Past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams, until he came to his farm and his son, his daughter and his wife were waiting for him. <clears throat> and his daughter took the needle and began stitching and his son took his Barlow knife and started whittling and they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. 
And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching new harness for the young ox in the barn. And he carved a new yoke and sawed planks for a new cart and split shingles all winter. While his wife made flax into linen all winter and his daughter embroidered linen all winter and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter and everybody made candies, candles. And in March, they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down. And in April, they sheared the sheep, spun yarn, and wove and knitted. And in May, they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up, starting to make new honey. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. So what did you think? Did the farm family work really hard to make and grow everything they needed? Why do you think that was? In the olden days, many families on farms make and grew almost everything they needed. What were some of the skills that the farm family used? <clears throat> Those are called human resources. They also used natural resources, like wood from trees. The goal of this farm family was to use all kinds of resources to get what they needed. Now think about your family. What sort of resources does your family have? How do these resources help your family get what they need? Here's an activity you could do. Talk about the jobs done by each member of your family. You can take turns silently acting out the jobs you have at home. The whole family can try to guess what the job is. Talk about how doing these jobs helps your family. Maybe you'd like to set a family goal. You could talk about something that you want to do together, maybe like going for a hike or a picnic. You could think about what things would we need to do to be able to accomplish this goal. You might need to think about different human resources or skills that family members need to, to use to help reach the goal. You can match these special skills with all the things that need to be done. For these and other ways to learn about and discuss money at home, Check out the parent guide for this and other Money As You Grow books. Thanks, and we hope you'll join us next time for another UW Money As You Grow book read.